when you said you had a secret, mm. I thought you were going to tell him about the other secret. What's that secret? Dan's not a... We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Daniel Brian Knowlton, why should people stick around for this episode? Well, <laughs> why would the random names? Um, it's just your name. So uh, we've got a bit of a secret. You know, you know those campaigns we, w- we run for world-leading brands that generate millions in sales? Yeah. They're not actually all original. What? They're not all just original campaigns that we've come up with. What? We get... <laughs> shut up. <laughs> we get inspiration from lots of different places. Do we? Yes, we do, Lloyd. Good. And I want us to talk with the anchors and share some of those places where we get inspiration from so they can start to get ideas for campaigns that generate millions in sales like we deliver for some of the right. world's leading brands. When you said you had a secret, mm. I thought you were going to tell them about the other secret. What's that secret? Dan's not a single man anymore. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, anchors. Yeah. He's not available. I got married. He did. And did. do you know what Dan said to me? Lloyd, on Friday the 24th <laughs> of May, are you available? And I said, oh, I'm not sure. He said, because I'm, I'm going to secretly get married. And I said, of course I'm available. You know, I'd, I'd cancel anything to be available on that day. And he said, oh, great. Can you babysit the kids? <laughs> um, because I wasn't invited to the wedding, everyone. Okay. Right. Let me just clarify just wanna, a couple of things. Imagine, imagine that. Are you available <gasps> like, to babysit? Other than two witnesses, no one was invited to the wedding. Okay. And I'm happy for those witnesses that they got to enjoy it, Dan. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't anything special. I really wouldn't get too <laughs> disheartened. Christelle, did you hear that? Wasn't anything well, special. No, in my uh, but just just for context, everyone, I've been engaged for eight years, and oh, left her waiting a long time, and then it wasn't anything special. Well, no, no, no. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, no, but no, you, you know, normally when someone gets married, it's a declaration of their love for the person. I'm going to stay with you forever. I've already got two kids and a mortgage. I, I'm already 100% do you, want, do you want a shovel for that hole you're <laughs> digging, mate? Anyway, that's... Well, we that's, had a lovely Dan, day. Dan, that is definitely enough for a clip for us to put online. <laughs> okay? Thank you very much. Oh, Listen to the Business watching. Anchors podcast. <laughs> I hope you're not watching, Chris, now. Um, and let me know if you're invited. I don't know what it's like. So, going back to... <laughs> Where we get inspiration from. That that story has inspired me to talk about something, Lloyd. <laughs> okay, good. It's inspired me to ask you a question. Okay. What do you think the difference is between stealing and getting inspiration from? Because as I said, we're a lot of what we do isn't totally original. Yeah. And we've had, we've spoken mm-hmm. to people before. Mm-hmm. Actually, I remember being in Ibiza and we told a, a, a guy there, we were like, we got inspired by this cool video. And he's like, but did you ask them for permission? Yeah, yeah. And I was shocked by the question here. It's like, you know, you spoke about that thing. You, you were inspired by that TikToker. Did you, did you get their permission to use that? And I was... I, was I thought of, that was a weird question. Yeah, I was thinking, um, oh, that's weird. Why, like, why would we ask them? Because in my point of view... Well, it made me feel a bit defensive. Because I was kind of thinking, what, are you trying to accuse us of stealing something? Yeah. It was made down defensive like he was a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> and Move away from that. And yeah, I was just... Because in, in my eyes, there is no original... There are no original ideas. Mm. Like we're inspired by so many different things in the world. So if you're writing a script for a TV show, you're inspired by your favorite TV shows in the past. Or mm. if you're painting a picture, you're inspired by art that you've seen in the past or by a song that you've heard. You know, mm. you're you get inspiration from all these different places. So in my eyes, I was kind of like, well, no, we, we made an advert for our marketing agency and it was inspired by a, a TikToker making content for his yeah. audience. And it's a completely different thing. For, for context, basically, it was a TikToker called Jack Joseph and he does this parody called GCSE drama, a GCSE drama parody, basically taking the piss out of what it was like when you were at drama and mm. do at GCSE level. And we made a parody, uh, that was like GCSE drama class makes an advert for mm. a marketing agency. So it's the s- similar style, but it was a completely different. Do you know where I think the difference is from like stealing and being inspired? By? Go on. So if Jack, so I think Jack Joseph 
would not give a shit that we've mm. been inspired by him and then made mm. like a video for our business because he's not bothered about yeah. a random marketing agency in Kent making yeah. that content. If uh, a one of our closely competing marketing agencies mm. made this GCSE drama video and then we saw it and we were like, <laughs> let's do that next week. I think, although I don't think that's stealing, I think that's, that's where what I would shy away from that I wouldn't do. Yeah. Because I think, oh, that's just a bit out of order. Like, mm. there there are competition and we're just copying mm. their ideas. Whereas when you're getting inspiration from completely different places, yeah. there's no negative effect from it. It's just you're being inspired by yeah. other places to, to do well in whatever you're yeah. doing. That that would be my... I know people might disagree, but that's what I think. Do you know, I agree with you. And do you know what I've noticed? Right, You know we always shout about brands like Surreal. Yeah. Right, because they do really cool marketing campaigns that go viral. Everyone shouts them. This is amazing. This is amazing. Mm. We do as well. None of their ideas are original. Yeah, I've so, noticed that recently. So there's actually. been a number of people that have pointed this out, specifically with companies like Surreal. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So uh, one of their most viral campaigns where they basically did out of home advertising that said a famous person's name loves Surreal. And it was I had an asterisk. Like it was like Serena Williams loves Surreal. It's her favorite cereal. And then the asterisk says, not it's not the real Serena Williams. Not that Serena they Williams. found someone else called mm. Serena Williams. There's been tons of brands that have done that. Lidl have done that. Um, Burger King did that. McDonald's did that. There was, there was all these examples of brands that have done that, you know, in the past 20 years, mm. like literally that exact concept, but it was obviously the creative was a bit different. They live in a different way, but it is, it's already an idea. I think you've got to give Surreal credit because they, they do things very well and yes. they, they improve upon a lot yeah. of things and they execute ideas very well so although other people have done it you know they might have done it 10 mm. times better because of the way they've executed it did you see i'll give you another example surreal their recent one you, i don't know if you saw it where they had a big out of home sign and they basically had uh like a platform on the out of home sign where two guys in suits sat on it with a megaphone and the sign was like speak to our sales team about the new flavor right. and they were there going hello do you want to talk about the new flavor with the mm. megaphone I was like, oh that is actually really creative mm. Mm. it's been done by tons of brands right like okay. someone again did a linkedin post look at this example of oatly doing it look at the, yeah. like so and i'm not shitting on them because i genuinely think they're super creative and their execution is mm. really good um, but it just goes to show like even the top tier brands that were all like, these are amazing. They are getting inspired by something they've seen and they're doing their own variation of it mm. and executing it very well. And I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I, think I also saw just on the final point of the difference between kind of stealing and getting inspired by, I saw a video that this guy on Instagram did. Uh, he's, he's called like viralvideo.me or something on, something like that on Instagram. I can't remember his ex exact name. But he did a video on this and he said that uh, a video has a number of different elements to it. There's like the hook, mm. the format, the style, the script, the this, like there's all the different elements that make up a video. And you can you can emulate elements of like the theme of the video, but deliver it with a different hook and a different mm. topic and a different style. If you literally, all of the different elements of video, you completely copy and you look, it's a carbon copy of someone else's, that's kind of stealing. Mm. Whereas, you know, whereas what you've said, Lloyd, is getting inspiration from other areas and other people outside of your industry, like we do, you can then take elements of the video, not all of the different elements, but some of those, and then we can then apply it to well, what we're example, doing. For example, that GCSE drama video, there were no similarities in the script or anything. Mm. It's not like lines in that video that we've gone, oh yeah, yeah, let's use that. It was completely original script. You know, that the... the theme of the video mm. was similar that we're taking the mickey out of a gc dra gcse drama video but other than yeah. that everything about the execution was completely different yeah um so going on to like some of the specific places now of where we get inspiration from we've, we've kind of touched on tiktok mm. we've spoken about getting inspiration from places like jack joseph um something else that uh i don't know if i've told you the full story of this the team got inspiration to create a tiktok where they pranked me whilst you're away yes did you hear about this I was, I was away. No, I don't I think you were here. No, okay. So, so this really got me. So basically, well, I'm not going to give names of people to, to reveal too many things, but we've got a client who we've got had a strong relationship for like, for like five years and I've built up a really strong relationship with the main person there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we've got the campaign running, every week I have a phone call with this person and we talk about our life and we're like really good friends and stuff and built this really strong relationship over years and I really like this person. So what the the team pranked me with they set up cameras and they got uh one of their dads to ring up the work phone 
And then they answered it as if it was this person. And they said the person's name, hello, so-and-so, how can I help you? So I sort of picked up, I said, oh, it's my, my guy. Um, <laughs> my and then, guy. and then, and then they went, they were like, I'm not being funny. You keep ringing us and it's really doing my head in. Can you stop ringing us? And I was like, I literally, I've never felt anything like it. I felt sick. <laughs> I was thinking they would never speak to anyone like that. Why would they do that? And they filmed the whole thing on my reaction. And it took me a good 30 seconds because they were being really rude to this person. And then, oh, and then they put the find out. <laughs> I was like, that was not real, was it? And then they burst out laughing and <laughs> it was genuinely upset me. But they got inspired. The reason I'm telling that story is <laughs> they got inspired because that's a the that's a trend on TikTok. You prank your boss. Have they not right. pranked? Have you been pranked here yet at all or not? Well, everyone makes me jump all the time. Yes. That's because that's really easy. Yeah. Um, but. Well, actually, no. Yeah, they always do stuff to me. Like they, oh, no, what did they do they a put, minute ago? They put a, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. Put a, put a root system from a plant <laughs> in my coffee to make me think it was going moldy. That's what the, that weird thing was described as, a root system, apparently. They just put uh, cotton wool balls in all of my stuff. So, like, I had a hat on my desk, and when I picked it up, they all fell out. When I went to put my headphones on, they all fell out of there. <laughs> they quite often do do things like that to me. <laughs> Yeah. So you're really respected in the workplace. Yeah, really respected and, and bullied in the workplace. Yes. Um, so yeah, TikTok is a great place to get inspiration from. As we said, there's trends, pranking your boss. Yeah. There's uh, pranking your boss. Inspiration from creators like Jack Joseph. This is the key thing with TikTok. Don't if 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 you are an accountant, don't search accountants on TikTok and get inspired by them. Just look for cool creators, stuff you're interested in, sports people. Yeah. You know, influencers who are talking about different topics and different yeah. themes. So I'm going to go in a different direction. TikTok, mm. you're like, well, cool on that. So yeah. you're talking about TikTok, yeah. right? Whereas I am not cool. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if you've noticed. Yep, I noticed. Um, like, if you say you're putting a list together, oh, who am I going to invite to my wedding? Like, I would be at the bottom. Like, not. Well, you cool. would be on the list. You weren't on no, the list. No, no, you wouldn't put me on the list. No. Um, so uh, I'm talking about. Uh, getting inspiration from outdated platforms. So, I've is this a, a real one or is this a joke one? This is a real one. Okay, go on. Why? No, because I, 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 I can my, imagine this is some long winded joke. My point is so shit that it can't <laughs> no, be a real one. No, is that what no, you're man. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, going back to the GCSE drama yeah. thing. Um, sorry, there's a bit of fluff. I was just doing a weird arm movement if you're watching. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about, oh, we've got inspiration from this TikToker. Mm. We had comments saying, oh, that's from Legs Akimbo. Was it? Oh, that cool yes. Like? It's like some old TV, a Legs Akimbo sketch. I, don't, I still like don't old really know what it is. from TV because I watched that. I remember seeing yeah. that. So we we're saying about stealing. Oh, should we steal Jack Joe's? Is that stealing? But and, his, his and reality, drama sketch was stolen from, from this stolen. old TV show. Yeah. If you're saying it's stolen or inspired by, yeah. if you're saying inspired by, and um, this is something that I think is really clever and, and could could have been what Jack Joseph's done. So, if you're on social platforms now, it's like there's stuff from TV shows from like the 1980s that mm. are hilarious, or you know, ads that really resonated with an audience, mm. and they were done for 80s TV. And it's kind of yeah. like now you can be inspired by that and be like, this has never been done on TikTok, mm. or like. This could be an Instagram reel, but it was an old 80s TV ad and we could mm. communicate in this. Or it had a, had this great hook at the start of the video that would get attention and now we could use that in our content or great comedy sketch and we could use that to keep our mm. to keep the viewers on TikTok engaged. So, uh, yeah, I just think there's so much. There's this like lifetime mm. supply of inspiration from the past and that's why I'm not cool because I'm looking, I'm looking back rather than forward. Mm. But, but what would you so so just trying to apply that practice because that sounds really cool so like are you like watching videos at home v vhf videos of old things no but i'm thinking for example oh i remember that really funny scene in extras the ricky gervais show mm. i'm gonna watch that on youtube because i think there's a funny element mm. that like we could kind of do something similar to mm. and i'll watch that now that's not an 80s tv show that's like early 2000 or something yeah but you kind of you can look that up and be like oh yeah that's what they did they did that kind of thing can that work in mm. this video that we're creating or even yeah. a funny line like can we have there's that really witty way that he said this and then she said that could we do a similar kind of interaction mm. in this 
So there's elements that you can. I like that because you're you're on that same theme of getting inspiration from other places that aren't like just stealing yeah. another marketing agency's marketing campaign idea. Yeah. You're like getting inspiration from something else and then applying it to to yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah, there's just like there's so much work, brilliant work people done in the past, and I think actually there's brilliant inspiration. I definitely think you that. do that with your script writing. Yeah, hundred percent. You contribute to to our, some of our really creative scripts and you add little bits that are really good definitely and sometimes there's just like one line or jokes in something i see and i just think oh i'd love to put something like that in something mm. and you know you find the opportunity you're like yeah that was hilarious that's yeah. really good yeah um nice yeah oh i was just thinking i remember what what was it in that we did the parody the this the diver ceo parody and yeah. there was a couple of there was a couple of like one liners in there that i definitely feel like you got inspired from other places where he's yeah he builds the, up and then he go what did he say he said, what he does say stupid fat hobbit yeah that's that is i think that is directly from such someone calls himself a stupid fat hobbit is that from it's not from lord of the rings oh oh actually i think it is <laughs> i think is it Gollum? no no yeah <laughs> Gollum. So he's not stupid him. fat <laughs> and yeah, uh, we so include that in an ultimate video i think i just threw out my life if i do something stupid have just said that to myself <laughs> and i just for some reason i find it funny and then it ended up as a line in a video yeah so yeah that, that's what i mean it's like lines that you find funny or interactions that you think yeah. oh that's a really cool way or they've told that story mm. really well and like one day i'll think of where that can yeah. be used in in our marketing or in our videos and that type of thing talking of videos one of the one of the places i get a lot of inspiration which you kind of touched on it with the extras thing is youtube because like you say whenever you think of these old things oh, i watched a movie back in mm. or i saw this thing basically someone's ripped off and put it on youtube or elements <laughs> yeah. of it so you can always go back and think mm. uh i'm going to search that but i also get inspiration from youtube by searching uh like good ads mm. there's always there's always like playlists of cool interesting unique ads just from the last yeah. like 50 years even an old nike one i saw the other day of this this 70 year old that runs like half marathon every day it was really cleverly done. There's little bits of inspiration you can get. There's also, there's like international ads from like other countries that mm. people in the UK have never seen, but you can be inspired by. There's like the French kid. one. There's the French. The clown. Wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying no, random no, no. words. The French wardrobe ad. Yes. Do you remember? Yeah where we're still just shouting french wardrobe no no sorry sorry i'm just it's just piecing together in my mind yeah a guy there's an ad for a wardrobe company is it is it I, a, I don't know and i don't think it's relevant then okay anyway yeah. he gets stuck in a wardrobe and he goes through this whole process and then eventually he's hiding in the wardrobe because he's sleeping with someone's wife and it's like a comedic thing that takes you through this whole build up <laughs> this whole build up and dan was inspired to sleep with someone's wife no, no, no. from that <laughs> advert that's where he got his inspiration no, no. Uh, and we saw that so this french ad from youtube we then created our own version where the, this is where the clown comes in where lloyd was dressed in a clown costume on uh, uh in cliftonville on the seafront yeah. and you were more, chasing more me relevant. you were chasing me and then the whole video is like this clown chasing me, build it, build it, build up. And then in the end, I run into the office and get knocked. And then there's a spelling mistake on a document I'm producing. And then it cuts to, and that's why there was a spelling mistake in the campaign yeah. that we delivered. Yeah. There's that whole build up. I mean, I, I wrote the script for the video and I've seen it. And even I don't understand what Dan <laughs> just said. But okay, but uh, you can go back to the old Nelson videos mm. and, and see that. The key points here are, <laughs> it was hilarious watching Lloyd in a full clown costume when it was the hottest day of the year, running down oh, the beach. It's made of like plastic, it's horrible. Yeah, uh, but that was fun. And yeah. it, it worked really well. So get inspiration from YouTube. It's yeah. still one of the best places we get inspiration from. Yeah. I've, I've got some more, Lloyd, if you... If I, can I just say one more? Yeah, go on. Mine's really, really a short point, and go then I'll go back to yours. I Something that I found really useful is getting inspiration from my passions. Which sounds, no, no, not you're looking at me like I'm talking like sexual, passionate stuff, things like that. Right. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're so like things that you're really into. You know, like for example, right. we've got someone on our team called Taylor. That I'm. Now Taylor has things that he's very into, mm -hmm. and he like he'll know every line or like funny meme to do with that thing, mm. and he'll be able to quote it. And I, uh, I don't know why I use Tay as an example, 
But, for example, another example that makes sense. Mm. I like gardening and growing vegetables. Business anchors, uh, listeners know that. And there's uh, inspiration that I got for content. There's this guy that um, started off this really small YouTube video doing gardening videos. And then I saw that he started creating his own gardening products and then was selling them on his channel and stuff like that. And he was doing it in a really cool way. And that's something that I was like, this is a really niche guy that I know about, but other people don't. And he's like making millions off of this product he's done. And I was looking at how he's done it and the strategies he's used. And I just think anything that you're like super into, like you're the top 0.01% of knowledge in that area Mm. other people in the world probably haven't seen that creator or that video or that Mm. niche film that you're into and so getting inspiration from places like that places like that are often useful because other people have never heard of it or seen it and it's yeah yeah, a bit of a weird idea but i like that i just instantly thought of you talking about passions lloyd lloyd now um lloyd now talks as if he's well into paddle then I was at a paddle. He's literally had one game. Padel? And he's, he's, he's telling everyone, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to go play paddle with my <laughs> mates on a Friday. Um, and I was thinking, did you get any inspiration from playing paddle? Because that's a passion. What, what inspiration have you got from that? That is a new passion of mine. I mean, I've, I've currently played three times <laughs> and love it more than I love my family. Okay. Yeah, pretty, pretty big passion of mine. Um, no, no inspiration from that. Okay. Day. No. Moving on. Yeah, okay. Um, Another place that I uh, get a lot of inspiration from is Netflix. So, do you have you got Netflix? What have you heard of Netflix? I've heard of Netflix. Is that uh, is that kind of like Blockbuster? <laughs> well, actually, ne- I can't, what is it? Netflix tried to buy Blockbuster. No, Blockbuster. Yeah. Netflix tried to buy buy Blockbuster. Oh. <laughs> Netflix tried to buy Blockbuster, but it failed. But no, Netflix, Lloyd. If you remember, it used to be Love Film. You used to use that service. I did, yeah. You got a DVD in the post. Yeah. Now it's a streaming service. With Is lots it? Of great oh, content on. I think I might have heard of it. And there's one example. I don't actually think this... One of our team... There's a program called Auntie Donna. And they do this sketch where they are... Maybe you explain this, though, because you're better at explaining things. What they're, they're interviewing... Oh, you just set up a point that you're making. No, no, I have no idea about and then ask me to about... explain it. I was saying, blah, 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 blah. You complained about how the I explained podcasting. the last point. You okay. complained about how I explained the last point. <laughs> okay. Auntie Donna. Uh, are you talking about the sketch where they are doing a job... In t- uh, they're doing yes. an interview. Yes. So there is a good sketch where uh, they're interviewing for a new housemate. And it starts off quite normal. And they're listing... Uh, people that are coming in for, for an interview and then the people that are kind of calling in they're gradually getting more comedic and weird and it goes across the table and shows these different characters and they say funny lines um, the sort of thing that you definitely have to see to understand or find entertaining <laughs> yeah. not the sort of thing you would want um, a, a below par podcaster to explain to you <laughs> um, but the, the, the point you do want to understand about this from, yeah. the mar- from a marketing perspective and getting inspiration is that we got inspiration from that creator own sketch, which did very well. And there's lots of shows on Netflix. You've spoken to me before about, was it Peep Show and stuff that you watch and you get inspiration for that for some of the campaigns you run for brands? Yeah. Yeah, pass the baton to me again about (laughs) Netflix, Dan. So I don't think Peep Show's on Netflix. Um, And, uh, but you're right. I have have, have had uh, inspiration from that too. We, We, one of our most successful videos in about 2017, um, I think it was something like five shit things to do at networking or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was filmed in a way that was from the perspective, I think that was from oh, Peep Show that. and that works really well. That got us a lot of yeah. extremely small, low-paying clients in 2017. <laughs> but we all started somewhere. Um, I've got one more place that we get inspiration from and I've got a story that kind of ties in, but I just want to tell it about Lloyd because it's really weird. Um But the final place to get inspiration from is events. We go to a lot of events now. We speak to lots of cool people who are sharing cool stuff that they're doing with their companies. And it's a great place to get inspiration from and learn about what other people are doing. On the note of events, the last event Lloyd and I went to was in London. I think it was an agency hackers comedy night. And do you remember what you did on the way home and in the room, Lloyd? On the way home and in the room? Yeah. Uh... I'd, I'd had a couple of drinks at that one. I can't so remember. We had exactly. a couple of drinks. On the way home, we were trying to find somewhere to get food, couldn't find anywhere. So we found a, we found a, a 
a shop that was open, a convenience store that was open. And um, like, what would be the, like a small convenience store, the last thing you'd want to buy in a small convenience store? So like a, a kind of corner shop that looks a bit run down, probably doesn't have the best food safety standards. Um, I'd, pr- I'd tell you what I'd probably buy, Dan. I'd probably buy a little carton of octopus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Lloyd, mm. Lloyd, I get just bog standard like plain sandwich or something thinking, mm, this is a bit iffy. Lloyd gets this wet octopus in a pot and plonks it on the mm. counter and I'm like... Oily. Why, Lloyd, the, why are you doing that? Is that it was also... Like it, I think it was expensive. It was eight pound. Yeah. I know, I know that's not like... You know, I've got eight quid, but yeah. it seemed a lot for a anyway, tiny pot of oily octopus. <laughs> we get back to the room. Lloyd's munching down on his oily octopus. Goblin octopus tentacles. Goblin octopus tentacles. He's also got a flatbread. And I, I eat my sandwich on the bed. I look over to Lloyd and to my disgust, Lloyd's got the flatbread and he's scooping the oil off the hotel room table, like mopping it up. You know, like you do if you've got gravy and stuff. And I was like, "What, Lloyd, you are, that's a hotel table. What are you doing? And I obviously thought he was mopping up to eat it. But yeah. apparently your defense, I still don't believe this. Your defense was that you were just cleaning the table. I you was, were going right. to eat that. You were going to eat that. You were 100% swear pro- swear on your life. I, well, I, I don't remember my exact, but I, I, think, <laughs> I think I wasn't going to eat it. So, right, in my defense, I had the six pack of flatbreads. I think I'd already eaten all my octopus <laughs> with one or two of them. <laughs> And then because I was an absolute mess, I'd had octopusy oil all over the table. And I thought, well, I, I don't have kind of anything to clean this with, so I'll just use the <laughs> leftover flatbread. So I was like, so I glanced to soak over. It up. But yeah, obviously Dan at that point sees me like look at, <laughs> mopping up this horrible table with octopus oil and thinking I'm just going to shove that in my mouth. But there, I, was a, there was a bit of you that was going to do I that. I don't think there was any part of me that wanted... I, I need a few it's more rancid. drinks to, yeah. To I do, um, Angie's dad, Jeff, oh, I was going to say his full name, which is a weird thing to do on a podcast. Anyway, um, someone's dad, maybe called Jeff, um, he used to go away to work and he used to stay in a travel lodge for like oh, I know you're three say. or four nights a week for a while. <laughs> and he's, I would say, Jeff, I, I really like you and you've been very generous to me in the past, but sometimes a bit tight, doesn't want to spend money. For himself. Yeah, yeah, for himself. That's what I mean. He's yeah, very, he's very you know, he'll buy you a drink stuff, but he's quite, he's careful with his money. Yeah. And rather than like, he, I'm going to put it out there, Jeff, I think you had a pretty decent job that was well paid. Mm. But he was, he would bring pitters from home to a travel lodge and he had some kind of system where he would cook them, them on the iron. The iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would like grill them on the iron to have pitters in his travel lodge hotel room rather than like, I'm guessing you could probably go to a Weatherspoons down the road and spend seven quid and yeah. get a meal. But he, he like had this whole routine where he'd like boil things in kettle, have like yeah. something Ooh. he could do with that. And then put your pot noodle put in your, kettle. he'd have his iron in a certain way that he knew he could do in his travel lodge room mm. as a grill. Mm. And he had some proper recipes going on. Yeah. So I would say I wouldn't do that. Mm. I would mop up to clear up, but not, not we, to. We've stayed in a few interesting hotels. So sorry, tangent. But, um, Whenever Lloyd and I rock up to a hotel, uh, they always give us a funny look, don't they? Well, not a funny look, but an yeah. interesting look. Well, they just think Mr. and Mr. Knowlton turn up. And you see they sort of glance at you. Okay. Then I think they're always trying to work out, is this a couple? Yeah. And nothing wrong with that. But when it's your brother, I'm obviously thinking, <laughs> no, I'm not with him because he's <laughs> a bloody dickhead. So we have to tell them. Yeah, so we have to tell them. And quite often we get given double beds. I think when we tell them, they're like, Sure. Yes, sir. I believe you. And then we go, then it's a double bed. And we have to say, no, honestly, can we have two single <laughs> yeah. beds, please? And then they normally do it eventually. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, enough. I don't know how. Are you, I think we just got onto eating octopus in a hotel room because yes. you wanted to tell people I was going to mop up the oil from a table and eat it. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this episode, Anchors, and hopefully you've enjoyed getting some different places that you can get inspiration from. I mean, I'm sure that... Now they hear about that octopus story, they'd be so inspired by me. Yeah. And the great things I do in my life. To mop up that octopus juice off a hotel room oh, table. Lovely. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this. Yeah. Subscribe wherever you are. Yeah. And come back next week and we will see, see you in your ears next, next week. week.
Just before you go, we want to take a second to talk about our podcast sponsors, Adobe Express. Adobe Express enables anyone to quickly and easily create standout social graphics, logos, flyers, banners, and more on the web and mobile. There are so many amazing features and benefits to using Adobe Express. You can choose from thousands of beautifully designed templates to inspire you and get started. You can quickly remove a background, convert JPEG to PNG, videos to GIFs, merge videos, change video speeds and more. Apply your brand to your content in just a tap and collaborate with your colleagues through shared templates and libraries. You'll also get access to the entire diverse royalty-free Adobe Stock photo collection created by the world's best professionals and choose from over 20,000 licensed Adobe fonts, as well as their collection of curved typesets, grids and exquisite font pairings. You can apply standout photo effects in seconds, discover easy bite-sized tips to get you started on the Learn tab or connect on one of their creative community spaces to stay close to our team and fellow users. Now that's a lot of features to get your teeth into. Click the link in the description of the episode to give Adobe Express a go today and we'll see you next week.